A growing body of research indicates dietary changes can substantially improve ADHD symptoms, either alone or as a complement to medical therapies. Some children have a high sensitivity to food additives and preservatives, particularly food colourings. A 2007 trial from Southampton University called into question the safety of certain food dyes. The randomised control trial assessed the effects of certain food colourings like tartrazine or E103, quinolone yellow E104, sunset yellow E110 and carminosine E122, Poncho 4R or E124, and Allura Red E129. This was tested on 153 3 year olds and 144 8 to 9 year olds. The researchers found these artificial colourings resulted in increased hyperactivity in this population when added to their diet. Although artificial food colouring has not been established, as a primary causative factor for ADHD. A subgroup of children have shown significant improvements when provided food that lacked these additives. Similarly, they develop symptoms reminiscent of ADHD when exposed to the artificial food colourings. Children with sensitivity to food colourings are often also sensitive to food such as milk, eggs, wheat and soy. Many parents anecdotally report that foods high in sugar can make their child's ADHD hyperactivity symptoms more pronounced. Children are more vulnerable to the effects of reactive hypoglycemia. This is low blood sugar following the rise in blood sugar from a high carbohydrate meal, and this will affect their cognitive function. Avoiding foods high in sugar can help to limit the reactive hypoglycemia symptoms that can mimic some of the aspects of ADHD. Studies indicate children who eat a balanced breakfast that contains protein, vitamins and minerals, such as found in whole grains, have less deterioration in attention during the morning hours at school. Neurofeedback is a technique introduced in the 60s and it helps people to regulate their own mental states by viewing an EEG or an electroencephalogram recording of their brain activity in real time. It utilises sensors placed on the scalp and these detect brain waves and then graph them onto a computer screen. This allows the subject to recognise ways of thinking that favourably alter their neurological function and can help them to gain better control over their brain activity. This therapy aims to change the threshold that triggers the brain activity in the cortex and this appears to be impaired in ADHD. The great majority of studies have been conducted on school-age boys, so it's still unclear whether its results are as promising in adults, young children or girls. Nevertheless, the majority of clinical studies conducted to date have reported promising, long-lasting results. For example, in one study on children and adolescents aged 6 to 18 years, Neurofeedback was as effective as methylphenidate in treating attention and hyperactivity symptoms. A comprehensive review of several studies examining the efficacy of the neurofeedback for ADHD management concluded it confers robust benefits for inattention and impulsivity and modest benefits for hyperactivity. Cognitive behaviour therapy uses behavioural skills training and interventions that target dysfunctional patterns of thought to improve the functional performance. Many cognitive training programmes for ADHD are commercially available and the practice is growing in popularity. This method seems to be particularly effective during adolescence and it has the advantage that it can be adapted to technologies like cell phones and tablets. For children with ADHD, the training of parents and educators can also be very effective for improving the symptoms. In a 2013 analysis of published studies on the interventions for preschoolers with disruptive behaviour, including ADHD, the parent behaviour training had more evidence of effectiveness than methylphenidate and combined home and school interventions with consistently good results and no adverse effects.
one trial involving canine assistance in addition to cognitive behaviour therapy achieved greater reductions of ADHD symptoms compared to cognitive therapy alone. A programme for children aged 4 to 5 that involved games designed to reduce impulsivity, inattention and to improve memory achieved significant improvements in the ADHD symptoms in a pilot study on 29 children. The positive effects were still present three months after the treatment. Exercise can have positive impacts on ADHD symptoms in both adults and children. 30 adults with ADHD were enrolled in a study and it compared frequent aerobic exercise with infrequent activity. The exercise group showed a significant decrease in impulsive symptoms and anxiety. Another study showed that cognitive symptoms in children with ADHD were improved after just 20 minutes of moderate exercise. Yoga can be helpful for reducing ADHD symptoms. A small scale study in nine children demonstrated significant improvements in the ADHD symptoms as a result of learning and practicing yoga. An analysis of several published non-pharmacological, i.e. dietary and psychological interventions for ADHD found supplementation with free fatty acids and the exclusion of artificial food colorings had statistically significant effects for reducing the ADHD symptoms. Considering that dopamine producing nerve endings contain up to 80% omega-3 fatty acids, these molecules appear to have a role in the central nervous system and its functions. Children with ADHD can have lower levels of omega-3 fatty acids in their blood. While the typical Western diet often contains excessive levels of certain pro-inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids, it's lacking in the anti-inflammatory omega-3s and these include EPA and DHA. In children, the severity of the ADHD symptoms are linked to the lower levels of omega-3s and the higher levels of omega-6s. Hyperactivity and inattention in general are also linked to an omega-3 deficiency. This indicates it might be a risk factor for ADHD. A UK-based study on 493 school children aged 79 years found omega-3 fatty acid insufficiency was very common and was associated with ADHD related symptoms such as oppositional behaviour and emotional instability. Research from another group found low blood levels of omega-3 fatty acids correlated with callous unemotional behaviour, antisocial traits and impaired emotional processing. Swedish scientists studied the effects of combined omega-3 at 558mg EPA, 174mg DHA and the beneficial omega-6 fatty acid gamma linoleic acid at 60mg per day in 75 children and adolescents with ADHD over a six month period. They found after six months nearly half of the subjects responded to the omega-3-6 ratio treatment with a reduction in their ADHD symptoms. In a subsequent analysis of these study data, the same researchers found the subjects with at least a 25% reduction in symptoms exhibited a significantly greater decrease in their ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. A comprehensive review conducted by researchers at Yale University examined evidence from 10 trials involving 699 children with ADHD. It was found supplementation with omega-3 fatty acids modestly improved the ADHD symptoms. They remarked it might be reasonable to use omega-3 fatty acid supplementation to augment the traditional pharmacological interventions. Blood fatty acid levels can be measured with blood tests and people taking fatty acid supplements can have a repeat blood test to measure their effects. Phosphatidylserine is a major component of the cell membranes and is considered one of the most important brain nutrients. The phosphatidylserine has a variety of functions in the brain, including supporting cell membrane fluidity and beneficially influencing the neurotransmitter symptoms such as acetylcholine, 
dopamine and serotonin. Several clinical trials have examined the role of phosphatidylserine on improving the ADHD symptoms. In a 2013 randomized control trial, 36 children diagnosed with ADHD were given either 200 mg per day of phosphatidylserine or placebo for two months. The phosphatidylserine supplementation resulted in significant improvements in the ADHD symptoms, including inattention, impulsivity and short-term memory, and no adverse effects were reported from the supplement and it was well tolerated. Another randomised control trial of 15 weeks duration studied the effects of phosphatidylserine combined with omega-3 fatty acids. In this study, 200 ADHD children were given either 300 mg of phosphatidylserine plus 120 mg of EPA and DHA or placebo. The treatment resulted in significant improvements in the ADHD symptoms. A subgroup analysis revealed the treatment might be especially effective in ADHD children with more pronounced hyperactive and impulsive behaviour. Acetyl-L-carnitine is a natural derivative of L-carnitine. It serves a key function in the metabolism of fatty acids and cellular energy production. Evidence from both animal and human studies suggest it can help to alleviate the ADHD symptoms. In an animal model of ADHD, the long-term administration of acetyl-L-carnitine to rats consistently decreased their impulsivity. This study also found the impulsive animals had altered levels of certain neurotransmitter metabolites and the acetyl-L-carnitine helped to improve this imbalance. In a placebo-controlled trial on 112 subjects, the acetyl-L-carnitine was found to improve symptoms in children with the inattentive ADHD subtype. In a separate randomised double-blind trial, the acetyl-L-carnitine was found to have a beneficial effect on hyperactivity and social behaviour in 51 subjects with ADHD. Vitamin B6 or pyridoxine is involved in the production of serotonin and B6 supplementation increases serotonin levels and it may improve hyperactivity in ADHD. In a nutritional survey comparing 100 people with ADHD to 150 healthy adults, vitamin B6 intake levels were significantly lower in those with the ADHD. An eight-week study on 40 children with ADHD found that supplementation with magnesium and vitamin B6 led to improvements in hyperactivity and school attention. Interestingly, when the treatment regime was discontinued, the children's symptoms reappeared within a few weeks. A similar regime of vitamin B6 and magnesium therapy improved the hyper-excitability symptoms in a previous study by the same researchers. In this study, the magnesium and B6 combination was given to 52 hyper-excitable children for six months, and symptoms such as physical aggressiveness and attention in school improved in all subjects during the treatment. Studies have shown that magnesium deficiency is common among individuals with ADHD. In a placebo-controlled trial, 200 mg of magnesium per day for six months showed a significant decrease of hyperactivity in 7 to 12 year old children with ADHD. Zinc and iron are both involved in dopamine production, so deficiencies in these minerals can have effects on dopamine neurotransmission in ADHD. Children with ADHD treated with Ritalin for six weeks received better behavioural ratings from teachers and parents when they also took zinc sulphate at 55 mg per day, compared to the children who only received the Ritalin and a placebo. Iron deficiency is present in a significant percentage of children with ADHD, and the severity of the iron deficiency is related to the severity of the symptoms. Children who have ADHD in conjunction with sleep disorders, such as restless leg syndrome, have also been observed to have low iron levels. A randomised placebo-controlled study in 23 subjects aged 5 to 8 years showed 80 mg of iron daily for 12 weeks resulted in a significant decrease in the symptoms. 
Another trial with 14 subjects aged 7 to 11 showed 5 mg per kg of iron per day for 30 days, significantly reduced the parent rating of ADHD symptoms. Higher doses of iron, such as those used in the trials, should only be used under the supervision of a doctor. Among plant-based supplements tested for ADHD, a combination of ginseng extract and ginkgo biloba improved a range of symptoms from social problems to impulsivity. Ginkgo alone was shown to be effective in another trial. In this study, ginkgo at 80 to 120 milligrams per day in 25 children with ADHD for six weeks produced a significant improvement in the subjective teacher and parent ratings. However, it did not outperform the methylphenidate. In another trial, 18 children aged 6 to 14 received 1,000 milligrams of Korean red ginseng twice a day. At the end of the eight-week trial, a significant reduction in attention symptoms and levels of anxiety was observed. Picogenol is an extract from the French maritime pine, or Pinus panaster, and it's often used in ADHD for its antioxidant and its vasodilatory properties. It can increase the cerebral blood flow, which is a measure of brain activity, to the affected regions. A double-blind randomised trial on 61 children receiving 1 mg per kg of picogenol or a placebo per day for four weeks showed a significant decrease in hyperactivity, improvement in attention and an increase in visual and motor coordination in the picogenol group. Another double-blind randomised placebo-controlled trial showed picogenol decreased hyperactivity and oxidative stress in the children with ADHD. The multifactorial origin of ADHD suggests an intervention that targets multiple specific underlying contributing factors can be beneficial. To test this hypothesis, researchers at McLean Hospital in Massachusetts divided 20 children with ADHD into two groups. One group of 10 children received 5 to 15 milligrams of Ritalin two to three times per day, and the other received a comprehensive multi-nutrient formula designed to target several factors that possibly play a role in the ADHD development. The multi-nutrient formula used in the study included gastrointestinal support such as lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidus. Amino acids like tyrosine, histidine, glutamine, glycine, methionine and cysteine. Essential fatty acids and phospholipids like EPA, DHA and phosphatidylcholine, and vitamins and minerals. A standardised assessment of visual and auditory attention was administered to the children at the beginning of the study to quantify their ADHD symptoms. Then the children either took the Ritalin or the multinutrient formula for one month. At the end of the one month, they were both administered the same symptom test again. Impressively, the ADHD symptoms among the children who took the multi-nutrient formula improved just as much as those who'd received the Ritalin. Upon concluding their study, the researchers noted improvements were found to be significant and essentially identical in both groups. To book a consultation or to learn about herbs, supplements and natural treatments, check out my website.